welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Good morning and welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast. It is August 27th, 2022. I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and I'm here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. And before we get started, I wanted to remind people that we will be taking your questions at around 1030. So if you have a question for Dr. Reese, please leave it in the comments or click the Zoom link in the description to be part of our live on-air broadcast. And today we are going to be talking about post-traumatic stress, how it affects your life, how it affects your health, what are the causes of post-traumatic stress, and how are ways that you can move towards healing and finding inner peace. So Dr. Reese, how are you today? Uh, good to see you. Hey, Joe. So I had, uh, I had my yearly physical with the medical monopoly. Oh. And I'm told that I'm as healthy as a 43-year-old can be. But really, not really, because I know what I'm deficient in and they have no clue. So they said, see you next year. And I said, you know, Maybe I won't be back because I do more than you do. <laughs> you said that to him. No, no, no. I, <laughs> you thought it's what, I'm, it's what I'm thinking because you projected it <laughs> because I know what's wrong with this body mm -hmm. and I'm on top of it and they don't, they have no clue because they're just, they're very superficial, very to them. I'm as healthy as can be. See you next year. Right. Right. Because I can't make them any money. Right. You right. can only make them money if you're sick. So they'll be happy with your once a year, $50 or whatever they get. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> and I just go because it, it just keeps, keeps my toe in the, in the medical game. So I can kind of be a spy a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you. That's why I get those six month blood tests, you know? I just, first of all, I like to see what's going on, but honestly, I haven't been for a checkup uh, in two, three years, you know, yeah. and until the, she also said that, uh, you know, once I turn 45, we got to start talking colonoscopy. So, Oh, well, they raised it up. But for me, they said 40, I had my first one at 40. Wow. So, <laughs> My last one at 50, and I won't go near one <laughs> ever then. They've, they've suggested it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but <laughs> isn't no. it interesting how they talk about it so authoritatively? All right. Like she's talking to me like, like it's a law. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm just like, this is, no, like I'm in charge. You're not in charge. Right. You know? If anything, you're a consultant. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's how I've always kind of treated my doctors like they were consultants. I'm in charge. You're the consultant. If mm -hmm. I need your advice, I'll ask for it. If I need right. something from you, I'll come from to you. Right. You know, I love the the insurance companies calling you every few months going, just a reminder, it's time for your checkup. And then, and then, and then it's like, okay, click. Um, but yeah, so anyway. And, and speaking of our topic today, they, you know, I noticed that on the forums, they, they ask a lot about mental health now, a ton. And they never used to. They never used to. This is new. Well, good. That's important because I'm, you know, well, it's, in, it's important to a certain extent, but they don't know how the mind works. And, you know, they're turning mental health into the new sea monster. Well, yeah, well, this is it. What they'll do is you went to a medical doctor. They asked you about your mental health. If they see answers that they're going to refer you to 
a medical monopoly psychologist or a medical monopoly psychiatrist right. who then is going to see you and say, well, let's say PTSD. You oh, you suffer from PTSD. Well, you know, we have this great drug that we've been using yep. and it really helps people with PTSD. That way I don't have to sit here and really go into the trauma that caused this. I can just give you a drug and you'll feel better. That is <laughs> getting their nutrition up, you know? Right. You need a shake on that. Looks like it needs a little shake there. <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah, no, I agree. It's it's a vicious cycle. If, if, if they can't get you, they'll try and push you into another aspect of the medical monopoly. And either way, Big Pharma is the one who makes out because they're the psychiatrist is going to give you drugs that they supply and the doctor is going to give you drugs that they supply. So out of all this, Big Pharma is the big winner, mm -hmm. as always, you know. The monopoly wins. Which I think it is important that we discuss topics of mental health on this podcast, you know. I have to, be, yeah. Because especially PTSD, um, because it is something that a lot of people do suffer from. And I don't even like to put the D on the end of it, calling it a disorder, because it's really just post-traumatic stress. That's what you have. When you say it's a disorder, it automatically makes people think like, oh, my God, you know, there's something wrong with me. Yeah, it's just just like when you call someone an alcoholic. Mm hmm. Yeah. So it already puts a stigma on it. And and as you know, I was in the cannabis industry for quite a while and I worked in the medical marijuana field and I had a doctor's office that I managed and PTSD was one of the diagnoses. You, you could get a medical cannabis card for. And so I did learn a lot about how it works and, and, you know, the whole mechanics of it. But I liked my understanding of PTSD is we've spoken about depression. We've spoken about anxiety on here yeah. and how we've said that could possibly be caused by some kind of nutritional deficiency. Right how a chemical imbalance as described by the psychiatrist or the psychologist could actually be a nutritional deficiency. Yeah. But I think PTSD, while some of the symptoms of it, PTS can be anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, and that kind of thing. I think the cause, the root cause is something different that can actually be defined. So it's a specific event or series of events in a person's life. Yeah. My, that... One of my best friends is a Marine mm -hmm. and he was, he was over there in uh, Iraq. Right. 15 years ago, I want to say, you know, the George W era. And yeah, he would wake up in the middle of the night going like this, you know, right. sweating, you know. And he had no control over that. Oh, it happened in his dream. Right. And it was because of real life incidents yeah. that he experienced or witnessed that in some way traumatized him, which basically. Yeah. But, this yeah. is in, but this is interesting, Joe, because. As you know, I, I was uh, I was on the radio for 16 years. Right. For college and 12 professional. And I used to I used to wake up doing the same thing with um, dead air. And I, I would imagine a lot of radio people can relate to this. You just wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Like you think. You think there's nothing on the radio, right? Mm. This is what we call dead air is when there's, there's no one talking mm -hmm. and there's no music playing or there's no commercial playing. There's no nothing. This is the worst thing that can happen to a radio person. Right. It, it is the worst. And it's a fear. It sticks with you. And 
it still pops up every now and again, even though yeah. I haven't been on the radio in 10 years. It could pop up on this podcast. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, it, it's a bad feeling. It, it, you know, it's that heart sinking feeling. And I, I've had instances in my radio career where something would go wrong and there's dead air and I'm down the hall in the break room, you know, getting a snack or some water or something. And you got to run. Oh yeah. You got to run as fast as you possibly can to get back to that board. And, and then you got to hit the right button. It's, it's. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess my point is, is, you know, just like my friend who had the PTSD, PTS from war, I had it from radio. Somebody could get it from a street fight. Right. Or being, being in the drug game, all sorts of absolutely street life happens, right? You could get it from a bad relationship with someone. You can, you can get it from all sorts of different things. Right. That's why I say it's very prevalent thing within our society that people didn't even know because let's be real i even living people who live in let's say an urban neighborhood right where they get out they walk out of their doorway and there's drug dealers on the corner there's shootings every night in the neighborhood there's muggings people are you know it, it's it's almost like a ptsd environment you know, mm -hmm. and, and they grow up like this. So it almost becomes a part of normal life, you know, and, and, and once they get away from that and they realize, oh my God, you know, look what the damage it's done to my psyche. Now, the way I operate in the world now, because of the traumatic childhood that I had in that urban neighborhood, it, it's something that can have long-term effects on your life and you don't even realize it. Right. You know, like, why do I always get involved in these bad relationships? Right. Well, maybe if you look back, it's, it, it, you know, the root cause is something PTSD, PTS related, Yeah. you know, and, and, and that makes it, a very complex topic because like you say it can come from so many different places uh and different levels of trauma right there could be giant big traumas but there can be a buildup of small ones that can create that same response um and different people how many people do we know that went to war and came back and i wouldn't say they're 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 fine or they're, you know, they didn't get as badly affected by it, even though they might've gone through the same experiences that the guy next to him came back with severe PTSD with mm -hmm. only because of people's own personal makeup. You know, some people are, are more um, equipped to, deal with the trauma uh it doesn't affect people in the same way so it's very complex but uh i, I think it's i don't find it complex okay give me your take on it because i know exactly what it is and i know exactly how to alleviate it it's the subconscious mind holding on to data holding on to memory hence me waking up in the middle of the night and being like oh my god you know <laughs> when, right because it wasn't really happening that no. was a mem that was a memory manifesting itself it's a memory that's all it is and so it's and i also you know, I also get it sometimes if I have a, a night where I don't sleep well, a memory is automatically triggered, which is programming from when I had my dark night of the soul and I, 
I, I had severe trouble sleeping. And so, you know, you can make a case that that's PTS. And uh, even when my dark night was over, I had PTS for about two months. And I worked with Mark Pelter on it, who is the mindfulness coach at the Peace Over Pain Clinic. And, and so it, it's all memory, Joe. It, it's, that's all it is. And thoughts, we've talked about it on this podcast, and it's in the Peace Over Pain book. Thoughts aren't real. Right. They're just not. They seem real, but they're just not. And so, you know, a two-year-old having a nightmare that there's the boogeyman in, in the closet in the bedroom, that's not real. Right. The boogeyman is not in there. And then the parent has to open the door and say, look, honey, there's nothing in there. Just your clothes, right? So this is what we call living in our head. Yeah. And people need to understand that memories are thoughts too. Yeah. So you don't distinguish between the two. Yes. Thoughts may be more imaginary and more coming out of the subconscious, but memories are also thoughts and they're not real and because so they already happened. What we have to do is we have to have the understanding that they're not real and you're just having a Michael Myers thought. Right. We talked about Santa Claus thoughts and Michael Myers thoughts. So understanding that you're having a Michael Myers thought and being like, oh, OK, that's just my mind spitting out some data. That takes the power right off. it. Right. And so once you take the power off it. It'll eventually fade away. And then there's the nurturing part nurturing what's happening nurturing oh okay i'm having a thought about war that time when my soldier friend's head was blown off right next to me okay it's okay it's all right it's just a memory it's not happening now it's all good this is what we have this is how we nurture ourselves take care of ourselves Otherwise, you're going to go to a therapist over and over and over and over again. They're going to squeeze you. You might end up on some drugs, and it's completely not necessary. And I understand that that might trigger some people, but it's just not necessary. And so you have to learn these things in order to become sovereign yeah i agree with you when you break it down like that you're absolutely right uh it is nothing but a memory manifesting itself through the subconscious into your life now now unfortunately when it wakes you up in the middle of the night it's kind of uncontrollable you you kind of have to wake up and do that kind of nurturing and reprogramming it'll go away right once you do it in your waking hours it won't in in fact your sleeping hours as much because you're dealing with it during your waking hours um i i had quite an experience with ptsd when i first uh i will i'll just have to come out and say it when i first got sober and and it was the first time in my life i was 25 years old where i really had to get down and take a look at myself and why i did what i did and it, it did come down to a number of traumas in my life, one of them being the death of my father that I didn't deal with, you know, and, and a few different incidents that had happened throughout my childhood and my younger years. Right. And when I got into it, you know, I did start going to a regular shrink, I was a psychologist, so I'd never got prescribed any drugs. But what I decided was after seeing them for about six months was that I could deal with this in a different way. So I looked into hypnosis and what is called neurolinguistic programming. Yep. Now, I don't want to get into the mechanics of it and how it works. And if you want to get into it, there's some great books out there on it. 
Uh, but it, all I can say is that it worked for me. And the way neurolinguistic programming works is kind of the same way what you're talking about, where you get right into the data and you either erase it or you switch it up. So you, you scramble it. You scramble the data so you, you can either no longer access it or it doesn't affect you in the same way. Right. Very good techniques. So if you're interested, you should get into it. And it is part of mindfulness. Um, but you mentioned something also when you spoke about how you did work with Mark Pelter on some of the PTS that came after your Dark Night of the Soul. Mm -hmm. And I myself, after my Dark Night of the Soul with my mother, found that I was suffering from PTS, the same thing. And I went and go saw Andy Schoenfeld. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the difference between the two people that we saw and some of the people that are available out there is that these are not traditional psychologists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both of these people deal with more mindfulness techniques and reprogramming techniques. Mm -hmm. um, because to me, I think that's the fastest way to get to the, to the core of it. Because like you say, it is all data. You have to look at the mind like a computer. And, and, and luckily, so do these guys. Right. And I will say that both of those had a finite term. I went for three months. You went for two months. And then he, they said, okay, we're done. It was not an ongoing process of years and years and years and years of drugs and this and that. So what is the importance and the benefit of actually having a little outside help every now and then? Oh, it's great. It's right. great to have someone be able to guide you and just from a nurturing standpoint, I mean, this is how we're brought into the world. We're brought in the world with mom and or dad. And we we feel nurtured for the first 12 or 13 years, right? right? So, you know, it's just our nature to have someone help us. And that's what we do here at the clinic, you know, with all the coaches and everything, providing that support system. You know? The nurturing. Yeah. And, and you, you did bring up an, another good point where you almost have to become your own nurturer. Like, I'm at my age, both my parents are dead. So I don't have that natural nurturing that comes from a parent. So I had to learn how to be my own nurturer, my own parent, because really deep down, we all have an, you know, an inner child in us. That's right. That tends to be react to a lot of these PTS things because sometimes it happened when you were a child. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, and I think it's important to learn how to be your own nurturer. And in the beginning, maybe have someone show you how to be your own nurturer. Absolutely. And th these are classes that I give in right. our 120 day program. Right. And, and they get Mark Pelter on top of it. So you know, it, it's, it's just like yesterday. Yesterday, I was on the phone with a, a client who um, is going through some pain. And she doesn't like pain. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, you like pleasure, right? She's like, of course, I love pleasure, you know. Pain is the other side of the coin. They come together in this world. Every coin has heads and tails. And I told her to nurture her pain. And it was a new concept for her. So I gave her a little example and, you know, she went off and went off to do it. Um, this is how we take care of our bodies. It's how we eat. Obviously, it's what we what we put into our mouth. It's how we sleep. It's, but it's also nurturing. 
because your your body remember the body follows the mind we've talked about that before so if you want to make your cells regenerate better you can do it with the mind this is your onboard computer and we you know in my book i talk about tms the mind body syndrome that's a topic for another day but and Ho'oponopono, which is my method, what I use. So this is all about getting in there and nurturing that inner child and letting the subconscious mind work for you instead of work against you. If you have PTSD, it's working against you. That means these this programming is just you know driving you a little nutty it's 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 a, it's a loop it's a loop and then your mind being analytical is going to take the memory and then it's going to analyze it and so now there's subcategories coming down now you got 1a 1b 1c 1d and oh here comes another thought oh let's get let's get a 1a 1b 1c 1d on that one too and it's like if you if you don't break the pattern then you're just going to go over and over and over and over again and it leads to a not so good life right right and you know i think um by masking it with psychoactive drugs and and dealing with it the way the medical monopoly deals with it where they almost make you keep digging deeper into it i think the opposite approach the way you spoke about it is the way that you've got to uh got to deal with it so what would you recommend somebody who let's say is stuck in this loop has been going to the medical monopoly, uh, psychiatrists, has been suffering physical effects, because we haven't really touched on that. Um, but what are some of the physical effects? How does it manifest itself, let's say, in the body? In the body. How does PTS manifest itself, let's say, in the body? Yeah. What are some... It creates tension. And so tension is going to lead to uh, your blood vessels and your blood arteries constricting and also your muscles constricting and so this brings forth perhaps fibromyalgia this brings forth high blood pressure um, of course it can mess with your adrenal glands which messes with your kidneys um, it, there, it's a lot it's a snowball effect. Some people might have back pain or, you know, calf pain, whatever it is. And, you know, it, it can be alleviated. And that's why in, in our 120 day program, we tackle everything holistically. Right. It's, you know, a lot of people throw the word holistic out there, but they're not really holistic, you know? They're no. just using the word, but this is truly holistic. So we're tackling it from all angles. And, uh, you know, I have the whole Oponopono course, which is called Instructions for Inner Peace. And so someone could take that course if they wanted to. It's also included in the 120 day program. So, yeah, I, I think whole Oponopono is a great way to do it i think maybe we should uh do an episode on that uh sometime or at least a portion of an episode on on that mindfulness technique definitely it all the only requirement for hpo as i call it is a belief in a higher power and a divine creator um whether you call it god or universe or whatever that's up to you but you know, which is also the one rule for the 12 step program. Same, yeah, similar. It's one rule for the Freemasons, too, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that to, to some other people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> but I also think that, uh, you know, a belief in that is important. A, a, a belief in the higher power or some kind of force that kind of keeps this crazy world all together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, even if you just think of it as the, you know, the electromagnetic field that covers the planet. Yeah. In, in, in that way, it may be because we don't know what that electromagnetic field contains. So it could contain everything we're talking about. But, yeah, you know, there's a lot of ways. I know you and I probably look at it more like the force. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, if you want to do a Star Wars reference. Star Wars, that, I'm, I'm Star Wars in and out. Yeah. So the force, uh, you know, as people know, has a dark side and, and, and a light side. There's the Jedi's and the Sith. Okay. And that could perfectly describe the the universe you know because people are under this impression that god is good oh god everything god is good well light is you could say light might be described as that but the divine nature in itself contains both aspects that is if you look at the yin and yang you can kind of get a picture of what the higher power is yeah. which is contained in you. But again, that's another podcast <laughs> that we can go into. Yeah. But, um, you know, as far as PTS goes, um, like I said, with my experience, I agree with you. It's better to use mindfulness techniques than to go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. And I'm going to be a little controversial here, but I would say it would be better if you feel like you need to get off your prescription drugs to look into possibly medical cannabis mm -hmm. and, and I'll just leave it at that, you know, um, because again, that's another topic for another podcast. And I would like to hear your thoughts on CBD and, and different, if that is something that can be, added to your health regimen uh if it's something you think and and cannabis in general but we'll we'll take that on in another episode but as far as pts goes i will say that is the only psychological um i hate to use the word disorder but the only psychological thing that they will prescribe it for uh so and the purpose disorder of that is better than disease though yes yes and the purpose of that is specifically to get people off psychoactive drugs. So they're not saying that medical cannabis is going to cure your PTS. What they're saying is if you want to get off these psychoactive drugs that may not be too good for you, look into medical cannabis as an option to wean yourself off. But I will say that the advice we always gave to the patients was, you have to deal with the psychological aspect. Don't just think you're going to smoke pot or take edibles or do whatever you do. And it's going to go away because it's not right. You have to deal with the, the mental aspect as well. And I used to refer them to Dr. Andy Schoenfeld, but that's another, <laughs> that's another story. But anyway, uh, we're getting a, a little bit over to the halfway point. We do have some questions this week. And they should drink their 90 so that they're balanced. Right. And that's the other component is to keep your nutrition and your health up, starting with the 90 and a proper diet, um, you know, keeping off the poor four and things like that. So your vessel is clear. Right. Um, you know, this has to be clear too. your bot, right. The whole thing has to be clear, the posture, everything. So everything's like flowing. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. But um, let's uh, let's take a little break and then we will uh, get back with the people's questions. And uh, we'll see you in, in about a minute. Oh, shoot. Hold on, Kevin. <laughs> I did a bad thing. So you're going to have a nightmare about it. You know, I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night and see how I hit the wrong button. 
and I made Shout a out mistake. to uh, Vasu. I never know how to pronounce his name. He's always checking in. Okay. Taylor. Oh, Coach Rain says the brain has filled in the blanks and created an answer and thoughts. That's good. Oh, okay. All right. Let's get to this commercial and we'll get to the questions right now. Have you read Peace <laughs> Over Pain yet? This short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach. Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, and a video training with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. All right. And just a reminder, Peace Over Pain is available on Amazon.com or you can go to peaceoverpain.com or you can join the Facebook group and uh, you can get it through there. Yep. So, all right, let's get into the questions of the week. All right. So did you have any more shout outs from the Facebook group? No. Okay. So. All right. So Anna on Facebook, she said, can a complete hamstring tear teal heal on its own? If so, how and how can I avoid surgery? The short answer is yes. But I mean, there are factors involved, of course. What stage tear is it? You know, What's the diet look like? I mean, you would need to do postural therapy along with staying off the poor four foods, getting your 90 essential nutrients. You're, you know, you want good nutrition for your hard tissue and soft tissues on this. And, you know, muscles are complicated. Muscles, there's 700 of them almost. And it's just complicated. And, you know, it just takes time. So, yeah, you could avoid surgery if you do the right thing. Right. And, and that's important. Like you said, the nutrition is important. And I think now, is this something that you would recommend? Okay. Let's say that you actually have to go get diagnosed by the medical monopoly first. Like you can say, Oh, I think I have a hamstring tear. Right. Yeah. You, yeah, you can go get diagnosed. I don't see why not. Right. You know, use their, use the resource. They're experts in diagnosing. It's true. And fixing so, infection, infections and injuries. Yeah. <laughs> so go, go, go get checked out. They got, they got the three eyes, uh, the two eyes down and, and infections and injuries, like you said. Yeah. So, um, so get it diagnosed by a medical uh, monopoly doctor and then, and then do a little research on your own. We know athletes all the time who heal from severe injuries without surgery, mm -hmm. you know, and I know they're probably using, you know, other ways methods, but really what they're doing is, is physical therapy, I guess you would say, but uh, their diets are good. Their, you know, their mental state is good. And, and their focus is avoiding surgery. So we know it can be done. And that's possibly a way to get in some research about how you can do it is find out other people who did it. Yeah, it's all relative, depending, you know, it depends on the situation, right? Yeah. I mean, if it's torn off the bone, yeah, you probably, know, <laughs> you're probably going to need surgery if it's torn off the bone. Yeah. So you really should have it diagnosed. But yes, it can. You can avoid surgery. And it can heal on its own. So that is the short answer to your question, Anna. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can always come into the group and talk to Coach Amber, and then you know, she'll move you down the chain. So, okay, Charlie on IG. All right, here we go. How to clear arteriosclerosis. I've heard after, the term used. Yeah, I've heard the term, but I don't really know what it is. Should I stop eating cholesterol? Okay, yeah, atherosclerosis are clogged arteries. Okay. And 
no, you shouldn't stop eating cholesterol. You need cholesterol. Uh, what, uh, clogged arteries comes from inflammation. So that means the artery is inflamed. The body in its wisdom is putting out cholesterol and or calcium to put the fire out because uh, cholesterol and calcium are alkaline. So that's the firefighters of the body. And so that's placking on the arteries, but the root cause is inflammation, or we could even back, we could even go back even further and say the root cause is free radical damage. So that's coming from what you're eating. Mm -hmm. You're eating the poor four foods. And I would also say uh, we would have to check blood sugar because an imbalanced blood sugar inflames arteries. That's why diabetics almost always have cardiovascular disease. Ah, and, and I find it interesting should, uh, first of all, let's, let's clear up something about cholesterol because the medical monopoly will tell you there is good cholesterol and then there's bad cholesterol. So first of all, what's the difference between LDL and HDL cholesterol? Size. Size. Size, and, that's it. Yep. And LDL okay. is, is small and HDL is big. And so the reason why they call HDL good cholesterol is because it's too big to get into an artery. Uh -huh. So your body's using it, right? It's going through your body. You're using it, which right there is proof that cholesterol isn't bad. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why they, how do you define good and bad cholesterol, you know? And so I LDL, see LDL. is little, probably little, low and high. Yeah. <laughs> little is, is small. Uh, LDL is small. So right. it can sneak into your arteries and plaque. But it's uh... only going to do that if you're inflamed. Right, right. And then my other comment is uh, on the question is, should I stop eating cholesterol? I would say it depends on where you're getting that cholesterol, because if you are getting it from chicken wings and, and uh, you know, fried foods and things like that, you know, yeah, you should stop eating it because a lot of those things are also high in cholesterol. <laughs> so... But like you say, even when taking out the poor four foods, uh, there are still plenty of other foods that contain the fats and what quote unquote you would call cholesterol. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll do a whole, probably a whole show. Yeah, that's on. another one. <laughs> and I have, a, I have a training on peaceoverpain.com on cholesterol as well. So it explains everything in detail. And that's free, right? I think it's 10 bucks. Yeah. Okay. So you can check that out uh, on peaceoverpain.com. A lot of people don't know there's a lot of free info on that too. Mm -hmm. um, so if they want to get started, just go there and there's a plethora of information there. Okay. So, so answer to your question, no, you shouldn't stop eating cholesterol, but you should work on getting your inflammation levels down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shannon on Facebook, what to do about tumors? I think that's a very broad question, but. Yeah, well, we, we do have a tumor protocol which contains uh, fucoidian. Fucoidian is known to break up tumors. And that's something that we use for sure. Tumors are typically a lot of dehydration involved in it because you have dirt and you spray water on the dirt and now you, that turns to mud, right? Now you can take that and create a mud ball, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of sloppy, but it's a little ball in your hand. Now put that into the sun in July and let it sit for half a day. It's going to turn into a rock. Right. You could throw it through a window. Yeah. So now 
your dirt turned to mud and the mud turned to a rock in the heat. And this is what a tumor is essentially. It's stagnant lymph fluid being dried up. And you know, sometimes it's got sea monster cells and sometimes it doesn't. So there's different types of tumors too. But fucoidian uh, is a great product. It, it's, it's a brown seaweed from Japan. And what's it's it called known, now? It's been known for a long time. Okay, that's good to know. So that's something that people can look into. And also on the root cause level, you have to get your lymph system going. Yeah. You know, you have to do things to get your lymphatic system moving again. And drink more water. Drink more water. Yep. Um, maybe a little salt in there to, to help with the de dehydration. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact, me living in the tropics, uh, I sweat a lot. Mm. Uh, and when I do blood tests, my sodium levels always show low. And I do have a certain level of dehydration here just because right here in this podcast, I'm sweating because it's 85 degrees outside, you know, right. um, and I don't have AC down here. So dehydration is a very key thing that people need to keep their eye on. And like you say, uh, that could be a key factor in taking what was just before a, a lymphatic blockage and causing some of these deposits to actually harden up right whereas if you were hydrated they may not have hardened up and might have actually moved through your system if you had started working on them like again taking the 90 doing whatever it is so there are ways also to kind of make sure the tumors don't manifest in your body and again, I have to ask you this question, is this something, because again, you could say, oh, maybe I have a tumor, I don't know, unless it's protruding, is this something that you should go to the medical monopoly and have diagnosed as well? Yeah. Right. I would use them for their diagnostic equipment. Why not? Right. Right. And, but, and, and a, lot, a lot of it depends also on their fear levels because you can get a medical-based ptsd i talk about it in the book oh, oh please so you can go down this medical monopoly rabbit hole and end up just a, a train wreck and so if you're prone to ptsd or anxiety part of me wants to say just leave the monopoly alone and go to a naturopath or go just, you have to go with your gut almost then. Yeah. You come to the peace over pain clinic <laughs> and you just know. start doing treatments and see if it gets better. <laughs> right. Just start getting on the protocol. Yeah. Get on the protocol. Um, just, but part of the protocol is dropping fear. Well, yeah, that's the third part, the mindfulness part. Like I always ask people, you know, when I'm in a consultation and they're telling me some awful things about their body, you know, that could be life-threatening. You know, I ask them, you know, are you, are you scared? And then that brings forth a whole other conversation, you know? And we end up talking about that more than we talk about, you know, the symptoms. Well, I think you're getting down to a root cause of why people are afraid to leave the medical monopoly is because they're fear of death, you know, and that's, you know, the medical monopoly, even though they will kill you, will try and tell you that what they're doing is going to help you avoid death. Um, but not telling you that the life you're going to have while trying to avoid death is going to be hellish. Right. Right. <laughs> so what would you rather have? Would you rather take your life into your own hands? Because honestly, 
who bestowed this? Did, was your life given to the doctors or was your life given to you? Um, are you ready to take your life basically into your own hands, take charge of your own healing, or are you ready to turn your life over to a medical monopoly? And I think tumors, when people hear that, that word and they, and they get, see that word, you know, they get scared and then they run right there and they're willing to do whatever they tell them. If it means cutting out, if it means chemotherapy, anything to live. And I think that's an important fear that people have to get over. Like, here's a story. I used to go to, to this haircut spot and this woman would you know cut my hair and she owned the place and one day i went in for the haircut and she wasn't there and so i, I asked the the barber hey where's so and so and they're like oh she was diagnosed with brain cancer i was like oh okay wow they're like yeah she you know she's doing the treatment and all that and you know they're holding on the hope and blah, 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 blah. In three months, she was dead. Wow. And that place is closed down now. She was in her early 30s and she had three kids. So, wow. yeah. What do you do when you get the diagnosis? You go down the medical monopolies path and you die. Or yeah. you live longer and suffer, like you were saying. It depends on the type of sea monster you have. Right. Right. They seem to have an okay grip on breast and prostate. Yeah, because they, they found some alternative treatments. Um, but other than that, it, it's like in, in, in leukemia too. They do but, okay with lymphoma. But, you know, brain is. Forget it. Big stuff. But what, what if this woman said, no, I'm not doing the medical monopoly. I'm coming to the Peace Over Pain Clinic or maybe there's some other. Or a naturopath, even any anything yeah, well, besides the medical monopoly. The only problem with a naturopath is they're not holistic. No, 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 no. They're they're a nutritionist, right? And they do prescribe. They prescribe. They can prescribe vitamins and things that you couldn't normally get. OTC, right? Like okay. higher strength fish oil, you know, all that yeah, kind of stuff. And so and so can't we over here, right? But. <laughs> Uh, a nature path isn't holistic. They don't, they don't take care of your mental health. They don't take no. care of your musculoskeletal system. They're nutritionists. Right. They, I have no right. idea why they're called doctors, honestly. Um, they should just be na nature paths. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're nutritionists. Right, right. Is what they are. And, and not to down them, because I will say they help me. They would okay. give me solutions that the medical monopoly would have told me something different. Do you know what I'm saying? That worked. So, but it, and this was like, before the clinic, Kevin. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's like, if, if this woman decided to go to holistic route, how much longer could we have had her live? But we'll never yeah. know. Yeah, we'll my mom know. said the same thing to me. We'll, we'll never know. And we may never know, Joe, because people are so scared that they just go with the authority. They, they go with the medical monopoly. They don't give someone like me even a, they might give me a consultation at best. They will not give me a chance in most cases. They're just, no, no, I'm going to, because then you got the pressure from the friends and family. Yeah, of course. Look, I'm going through with my brother right now. Yeah. 
and I went through it with my mom and you're going through it with your dad. You know, you can try as much as you want and tell them that maybe a different approach would be better. But that medical monopoly, and it didn't work out well for my mom. I don't know how it's going to work out for your brother. It didn't work out well for my cousin. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting sad just thinking about it. So um, last question. If you eat liver, aren't you eating toxins? And I guess they're saying this because the liver clears toxins from your body and there must yeah, be who, left, who, leftover toxins. That's Genyard on IG. Okay. Yeah. The liver doesn't store toxins. It neutralizes toxins. And so it's, it is the, the, the healthiest organ that you can consume. And uh, with bone probably being right next to it. But you think about all the lions and bears that kill something and go right for the liver. I mean, they instinctually know. <laughs> so it's, it's not like, you know, there's, there's not lions just passing out like, oh, I had some bad liver. <laughs> you know? True. They're eating it raw. I mean, we're talking humans where you're going to eat it cooked. More than likely. Some people do eat it raw. Oof. And if you do, you want to do it probably frozen. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's no there's no toxins in there. No, nothing that's going to put you in harm's way. The liver has 400 functions, give or take. It, it is right. a monster. It, it is the MVP of your body. And you know, if you're eating organs, if you're looking for something nutrient dense, then you eat liver. Or you say, ill, that's disgusting. And you drink your 90 essential nutrients. I mean, you technically don't need to eat liver or bone broth, really. No. If you're following this protocol. No, but exactly. I have to talk about it and tell the truth. Yeah, no, my mom used to eat liver and I thought it was disgusting, but you know, each to his own. And there's a lot of ways to get liver. There's liver pate, there's goose liver. I mean, there's a lot of ways to get it. You don't have to fry it up with onions, Yeah, but no, either I, way, I, I, I make it in a pressure cooker and then I chop it up in the pieces, chop liver. And then I just eat it like a supplement. Right. So it's just right. a little piece like this, you know, just like this. Uh-huh. Oh, so you, you'll make a batch of it and leave it in the fridge? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So we're about at the end right now. It's been a great show, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, I do. I think uh, we, we have a lot of great information out to the people. And uh, I'm looking forward to next week. So I just want to remind the people, you can go to peaceoverpain.com. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and join the Facebook group. And also, we are now on Spotify and YouTube. So, uh, with that, I will see. We will see you next week, ten a.m. on the Peace Over Pain podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.